Hi, welcome to this uh, In Conversation between me, Hannah Jones, and uh, my colleague, Helena Holgerson. I'm at the University of Warwick, and Helena's at the University of Gothenburg. And um, we're going to talk today about ways of using theatre methods in social research. Um, we're going to talk about some of the experiences we've had doing that, but first we'll talk about what we mean by theatre <laughs> methods, and we'll go on to talk about some of the challenges and uh, opportunities that you can find with these techniques. Um, Helena, do you want to say anything more to introduce yourself at the beginning? No, maybe that, um, I don't know, we're both sociologists, but uh, I'm at the uh, Department of Cultural Sciences here in Gothenburg, at Gothenburg University. Um, I think we both teach on creative methods in different ways. Um, and also that we both uh, um, worked with the methods in, in, in slightly different ways, which is interesting here. Yeah. Um, so we'll go on to that. But maybe we should explain what we are thinking of when we say theatre methods yeah. in social research. Um, so we kind of we're talking about this and we thought there were maybe two broad areas that, that are often used in this way. Mm. Um, do you want to talk about ethnodrama? Personally. Yeah, I can do that. I think just, I mean, a broad definition of that would be, it would be a stage play uh, uh, that are based on interviews. Um, and uh, if it's in a, in an academic setting, I think it's it would be the, the researcher uh, being um, the script writer or involved in the, in the, writing of the scripts, maybe in collaboration with a dramatist. Um, the project that I'm going to talk about later um, could be uh, understood as uh, an ethnodrama, but, but then it was uh, a dramatist who, uh, um, who wrote the manuscript based on interviews made by sociologists. Uh, but I'm going to talk more about that later but the um i think the the aim with that method or one aim is often to uh, to present your um, results to another audience or wider audiences um it could be uh, interviews that ha have that have been analyzed in uh, academic articles before uh, and then uh, the researcher wants to like explore how they could be presented in in a dis different shape so yeah so then that's about a performance that's often tempts at least to be aesthetically pleasing to use theater to to communicate research findings which might and and theater practitioners use ethnodrama don't necessarily call themselves social researchers as well right no no and it, i think it's uh, also a kind of documentary theater could also call it that. Uh, but then there's the more participatory, participatory theatre too. Maybe you could say something about that. <laughs> yeah, so that, of course, there's crossovers, but um, some of the, the ways that researchers have started to use um, or have long used co-production and participatory theatre is to work with research participants, so the people we're trying to find out about. So moving beyond not calling them interviewees to calling them participants to actually trying to produce something together, um, often calls on theatrical kinds of methods to get people to, to speak and make up stories or tell stories that exist together um, so that they're writing the play more directly together or even not writing a play but practicing and telling stories together without necessarily an audience mm. um, so it crosses over it can cross over I guess with ethnodrama but that could be mm. much more held by an author yeah but I guess one thing that we often come across with the, these methods is that they they ha they share some idea about giving voice to particular people or stories mm. um, and we talked about you know often that's the thing that social researchers try to do with particular marginalized groups or unheard groups to say 
we need to tell these stories that people don't know about or these lives that people don't know of. Mm. And sometimes theatre is used as a way either to give more agency to the people, in theory, to tell their stories or to be more accessible to other audiences because a play is more fun than an academic article sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, But we talked about some of the pitfalls of that as well. Yeah. I think I will get back to a a master thesis that I (laughs) supervised just this uh, spring. Um, It's a a student of mine uh, who uh, um, she she wrote about uh, documentary theatre uh, and uh, and she w- one theme that she elaborated on was the tension between uh, she interviewed um, dramatists that work with the documentary theater and the tension between uh, they all wanted to to give voice in some some sense that that's why they wanted to work with the documentary theater uh, but they also wanted at least some of them had kind of a political message somehow but there's a tension between those two right to to use stories to to have a message uh, maybe it's that that kind sometimes maybe that is that's the case in, in sociological research too but maybe it's um even more of a tension in in a, in a drama project so that was that was interesting but i think we're going to get back to that that um whoever it is that used interviews in their work, if it's a sociologist or a dramatist or someone else, the ethics are not, are, are kind of the same. <laughs> you, you, there's always these kind of issues that you have to, um, to consider. Yeah. And the questions about whose story it is, where, what's relevant, what's not relevant. The Yeah whether the person who told the story of whose story it was originally mm. um, would see the same things in it as a researcher or a dramatist. And you can you never you never you can never include everything. So they can always they feel that you didn't include the most important stuff. Um, I think that would be the same too. Yeah. So some of those questions are about the We talked, I guess, about the political or the kind of motivations of the of the dramatist or the author or the researcher. Also, this comes in there too, which might not be party political, or um, but there might be questions about what's of interest, what's valid, what's important, and what's not. Mm -hmm. Um, And some of the theatre traditions that have sort of filtered into uh, the social researchers work are around um, Boal, are kind of drawn from traditions of Boal's theatre of the oppressed, where, mm. uh, which was really about the people, the oppressed, being able to tell or change the world through performing and creating together. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, there's always tensions there about who's directing that, who's putting those situations together where people can produce that and what the consequences might be, which um, have power relations involved. So it goes back to broader research ethics. Yeah. yeah. Um, Should we get on the more concrete ground and talk about some of our work in these areas? Yeah, sure. I can start to talk about... um, uh, I've been involved in three documentary theatre projects, but I'm going to talk mostly about the first one. Um, and I was, uh, it was uh, when I was uh, a new PhD student, uh, so it was uh, a few years back, <laughs> it was in 2006, um, but I was contacted by a dramatist in, in Gothenburg uh, who wanted to do a documentary project uh, at a community theatre, uh, and uh, he wanted, the title was The Mental States of Gothenburg. And he wanted to interview young people in different parts of the city. Um, and the main question he had was, is there a, a, a situation or an event in your life that you would like to see performed on a theater stage? So it, it, it relates to what you were talking about, uh, uh, about giving voice and, uh, um, uh, yeah. So, and then... It, it, 
he also had these very uh, like very big questions about what's the meaning in life and what do you want to accomplish here on earth and so on and uh, but we also we helped him do helped him with the questionnaire uh, uh, and uh, the uh, the questions and so we pinned it down to more concrete questions to uh, if people could get examples of situations that they've, they've been in that they wanted to talk about in relation to those big issues um so me and two colleagues we did it was nine interviews with three young people from uh, the marginalized uh, in sweden it's called suburbs uh but it's not uh, in Sweden. That would be more like the council projects uh, in the UK. Uh, could be different concepts in different countries. But uh, um, anyway, uh, 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 that was one group of, of young people, and then it was the more the middle class uh, young people from the cent- central city, and then more of the upper class uh, youth from um, from the villa suburbs uh, close to the sea uh, so we did that uh, and we transcribed these interviews and then we handed them over to uh, to Matthias Andersson who uh, made a play out of that material um, and in, on the poster it says that it's made out from 80% uh, of uh, uh, of the script is strictly from, uh, from the interviews um, and uh, in the end he also made the sociologist uh, which is kind of he merged the three of us into one character and then himself as the dramatist we're also on stage uh, which was interesting um, so um, so that was uh, I, I was not involved in the in the manuscript writing uh, uh, but uh, um, but it was uh, um it was very. It, they they wrote a lot about it. It got a lot of attention in Sweden, and it kind of uh, started a new phase of documentary theater uh, in Sweden. So he made. He's been working with these methods. Um, that was his first play, and he still uses it in different ways. And I was involved in two more projects uh, that was quite similar to to this one. Um, and uh, we, we thought when we when we planned this. Uh, that we were going to uh, just mention a few things that we think uh, worked very well in these projects and maybe things that, uh, that we could, uh, that we, in, if we would do it again, maybe we, we would do it differently. Um, I think, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say too, that um, in the reading list, uh, there will be a text where I describe this project and in there, there is uh, a link to a YouTube film where you can see a few extracts uh, just to get a sense of uh, what the result of this, these, these interviews was. So you can see both the sociologist and the dramatist in that, <laughs> in that film and the young people. Uh, I, think, um, uh, I think I realized that, uh, you know, uh, the way that he portrayed these young people, and I think would say especially... The ones from from uh, uh, from uh, from the marginalized areas, uh, he made them. I think he was most interested in them. They are the most complex character in this play, and they're they're also like the the most charming ones. They're kind of the stars of this show, I would say. Um, but he he really managed to uh, to bring them to life. Uh, to make us feel for them and to understand them, uh, and it made me, for one thing, think about like, like I do make characters somehow when I when I um, write uh, about when I uh, write articles based on on interviews and present people and give the give them fictive names and like and and kind of put them in relation to each other in different ways. Uh, but I also thought that I could never, like, um, bring them to life this way, or it's it's much more difficult in a sociological uh, article. Uh, so I was uh, kind of struck by that, uh, how uh, um, how the audience was uh, affected uh, by those stories. Um, 
and uh, I was also I thought it was really interesting that I said that he he included the social sociologist and the dramatist in the the play. Uh, I don't think that was the plan from the beginning. I think that was uh, part of the process. Uh, um, but he kind of realized that he had to do that, that he had to comment on how the, the, these interviews had come to be or about ethical issues on who owns these stories. Can I just claim that this is my manuscript? Am I really the script writer of this play? Uh, so it, I think, um, I know there was some uh, uh, reviews in the paper that said that this was an unnecessary part of the play. But to me as a sociologist, I thought it was very interesting that he felt that he needed to include it because it, it kind of became a theater play with a methods chapter. Um, and, and I think that I think that worked really well. Um, uh, I think uh, maybe there are some characters that was uh, um, that was uh, uh, was uh, portrayed a bit flat. That there was he was more interested in some of the characters of the interviews. I think, mm -hmm. and he has that freedom as an artist. And I won't claim that I am that 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 happens to us too, right? That we're more interested in some interviewees, and that's that's per perfectly fine. But maybe as a sociologist, I have maybe more of a responsibility to listen to everyone. Like that, there are differences in uh, like um, the rules. Yeah. <laughs> so there's kind of some more drive for a good story. From the yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas we might still want to tell a coherent story, but maybe ideally we're led by the data to what that is. So, yeah, yeah. who doesn't fit would change our conclusions. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I, I felt that some of the people I interviewed, I don't know this, but I, I, I would assume that they maybe wasn't so happy with the way that they were. Uh, portrayed because they were quite, in a way used as a contrast uh, because they were more privileged so they were used as a contrast to the uh, to the people the, the, the people the the, the star <laughs> the stars of the play uh, uh, so um, so yeah I, I thought about that um, and uh, I also as I don't think that's a critique of the play really but I, I to myself I thought that if, if I ever would be involved in such a project again maybe it would be interesting to at least somehow be part of the script writing as well maybe um, because I mean it was the collaboration but it was uh, it was also kind of uh, just handing over interviews um, so that I think that might be interesting thing to um, to do if I was to be involved in such a project again. I, I think that's uh, interesting because you also said you don't want to be the artist. So yeah, yeah, and and I also I also and I will get back to that. But I think what I also thought a lot about in this um, uh, throughout this collaboration was that like that both the sociological craft and the artistic craft needs to be respected. And I have s such respect for, for his craft. So it, it's not that I wanted to like to, um, maybe I want, maybe it's just maybe not to be so involved, but maybe to be, uh, um, to get insight, maybe to, to like see the method. A transparent yeah. project yeah. I, uh, process. Uh, uh, it would be interesting to to see how how the the analy analysis came to be. I don't know. Yeah, uh, so that's what I I thought about. Cool. Um, and your your project was quite different. Yeah, much more. It did result in a performance, but um, not a professional one. And a lot of the work was about devising um, and talking about ideas through mm. drama. So. It was based, it was a couple of years ago now, um, in 2018, and um, I was, I'd worked on a project with a lot of, a group of colleagues, which about um, how the UK government communicates about migration control, 
was a book that we wrote together called Go Home. Um, and that followed lots of different kinds of stories. Um, but we were interested, um, a colleague and I from the project, Yasmin Gunaratnam, wanted to kind of follow that up a bit more. And we worked with a co company called Act Real, who have developed the various techniques working with researchers, academic researchers and drama techniques to do kinds of dissemination and, and different kinds of projects. Um, so they were the theatre people and we provided them with kind of the format and the idea and they developed 10 weeks of working with teenagers in school. So um, two different schools and about 10 or 12 students in each school aged 13 to 15 would come weekly to workshops for 10 weeks. And so what um, they would work, first of all, they did some theatre warm-ups. That was quite, partly the theatre was a exciting thing to do more than going to workshops on migration studies. Um, and then um, they also learned something about, about the kind of ways that migration control work and how it affects people in the UK. Um, and and Ida, per, Ida Person, who was one of the actual um, founders developed a script so she used our data so she had some of our transcripts she'd read some of our publications and so she had an idea of what we'd found but also some of the raw data the, the verbatim stories of, of people we'd interviewed um, so she devised a really loose script that the young people then workshopped and they were in these two different groups so they worked on it they did the same program but they came up with different versions of the play and it was using some of the direct transcripts like Matthias did, but also using some really surreal techniques. So she had a, pers a character who was the border. So one of the actors played the border and shouted at people and people responded to the character and the young people developed that. So they had a starting point. They took things out, they put things in. The two plays ended quite differently. One with the border being pushed around and pushed to the floor and and then saying, what now? And then the other one with the young people kind of making their own statements from that were that not from the characters or the, the people we'd researched before, but what they thought about the issues we talked about. And they were all different statements. So what we were doing was using the, the process of theatre of being able to speak, talk, empathise with other people through through acting and also being able to and learn about other people but also being able to sort of put your own interpretation on that in a very facilitated way and they both schools did a performance at the end to their friends and family so in a way it was research dissemination because the young people learned something about our research and they shared that with people who might not have gone to a play about immigration control and, and then had a discussion. Um, and But it was performance, but the, I guess in terms of the, the weaknesses or the ways that the challenges of doing that kind of work is it takes so much time and investment and, and resources from everybody involved. Mm -hmm. So there was a 10 week program, which is a lot for, young people of 13 or 14 to stick with. They had to learn lines. They didn't all manage to learn their lines. Um, there was the theatre practitioners and there was the researchers all kind of helping to facilitate. And of course, the teachers who were also involved. So there was a lot of time put in, but there still wasn't quite enough to make it a shiny performance. So what it, it, they performed and they, they had a good response, but um, the aesthetic part of a theatre production would have taken more work. Um, not everyone learnt their lines, not everyone had quite worked out where they were supposed to be and some of the things could have been polished and finessed. So in terms of it being, if it was theatre for the sake of theatre and presentation, it maybe wasn't that, but it definitely used those techniques to think through and also produce new insights about how how people think about those things. Yeah, we thought, we, because we, we talked about that, that one aim is often to explore data. Uh, but did you write anything academically about this, this play? We're working on it. So I'll put, at the moment, what's available is um, the, some of the recordings and um, a blog that one of uh, Vanessa from Act Real wrote about one of the performances. And, and I'll share that 
with the video. But um, we, Yasmin and I are working on writing about this. And what we're particularly thinking about is the way that the young people um, presented their thoughts, but also the thoughts of another. So this idea of giving voice was quite striking. One of the things that was most striking to me was how a young woman who had said at the beginning she didn't know anything about immigration and she just grew up in this town and um, and then and was reading out the or was telling she was learned the words of um, one of the real people who had experienced being um, chased by immigration control and feeling unsafe in their own home because they didn't know where to be so going through that experience and what that does so it's not first of all she's telling she's learned and is and is sharing the story of another person but she's also um thinking about what that means in a different way so i guess that's the process actors go through but then they were also allowed to put that in context themselves so we were learning about how um those young people some of whom had experience of immigration control some didn't um how they made sense of that together and what they then thought about the different kinds of stories, including anti-immigration stories that were in the play and in our research. So include, you know, it wasn't just the voices, the whole, the research originally was not just the voices of um, people subject to immigration control, but also people who were worried about immigration, also um, officials involved in the process. So it was a way of, un- the young people got to understand and analyse and we got to see what that did and try to think about that process of, of analysis that they're doing in a more everyday or participatory way. Mm. So it has <laughs> all these really levels. interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it, it's very um, intensive kind of work, and that's one of the things um, to learn about to think about these methods as well. Like, what are you getting into when you when you decide to use theatre methods, and why? Um, as, as a social researcher, I mean. Yeah, we talked about how people are using them currently. Mm -hmm. Do you think we've we've learned much from the projects we've done about about social research itself? Yeah, Um, that's. I think that's a that's a common thing with our experiences from working with theatre methods. Uh, We like learned a lot about how, or we like got got to reflect on how we usually work and and. And how how that um, differs. But what uh, what then, if you could summarize, like what worked well, and is there something that you would have do would have made differently if you you'd ever do it yeah. again? Yeah, I mean, I think it worked. I mean, it worked as it seemed to work well as a way of involving people at that age over time in in something in a in a more lengthy process than it just to a class talk or something um, they did learn we did an evaluation which showed they had learned information about immigration control but also developed their kind of critical thinking skills so that they would read media stories and think about where that came from who was doing the telling just general critical thinking skills that we'd hope our students develop and um and I guess through the process of empathy that might have helped through the kind of playing of different roles as well. Um, I think the other thing is this, is this general dissemination of reaching wider audiences, which academics often want, well, our kind of academics often want to do. Um, so there were people who came, as I said, came to that play and the performance as, who were a wider group of people than definitely than would read an academic article. Um, yeah and who might be engaged because their young people, their friends or their children were part of this as well as because it was a play. So there was or another... I didn't like, mention uh, that, I think, but uh, the Mental States of Gothenburg, it, it was showed to school classes mm-hmm. uh, that was kind of forced, forced to come there to watch theatre. So, uh, and also for paying a, a paying audience. Um, and I went there with my... It, was, it only played for a few months, but uh, I went there with my methods class uh, yeah, during that semester, so they got to see the the sociologist on on stage and talk about that. Yeah, so there's all those parts of the of the of theatre work that um, doing the act, working out the script or the play or however 
it's devised and then performing it and then also the audiences that reached which might and our research audience might be wider than the people sitting in the seats in the theatre but I think so I think those elements are helpful that's often what attracts social scientists to putting their work into mm. theatre often in a very simple dissemination kind of idea but um it can also produce this new knowledge and transformational thing even if there isn't a final performance mm. um but i think that what that part of the work especially mm. needs i think in terms of what could have been done differently it, it just needs that time and attention and engagement which is very um resource intensive and we don't necessarily have the time to do but also the expertise of the mm. the dramatist the facilitator the the people which the social researcher might have as well but as we've said before that why would you, you've got particular kind of expertise so that collaboration is is a challenge um for in any of this kind of work I think that's the kind of lesson about broader creative methods as well in terms of collaboration and having shared goals. One of the things we've talked about before around this is the aesthetic side of creative yeah. methods and how that fits with our our goals. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Um, with, the, with the dramatists that were interviewed in the master thesis, they were they were really fascinated by the stories, but they were also so so um, like uh, into the uh, the spoken the like unaffected spoken language and also the kind of um, really unstructured narratives uh, that they felt that it would be hard for them to write uh, in a in a fictive story. Uh, so it was not just the the, uh, the content of the stories it was the the shape of the story story that they that they uh, wanted to talk about in those interviews mm. which is interesting. and that because nobody really speaks in sentences no. in proper grammar and that we we struggle or oh, don't know when it, as social researchers who might use interview transcripts there's always the question of how much to clean that up how, mm. even just in traditional writing yeah, how much to take out accents or mistakes, but um, in this case, it was kind of valued by the, the writers. I guess. I think, um, yeah, one of the things that those is not just that the play makes it um, visible and and easier to engage with, but it might make stories more real through the through the aesthetic or drama through you were talking about the uh the young people becoming the the hero of the story and a, a yeah. real person that someone could care for yeah um, and that fits with those wider kind of challenges for sociology and um that les back and michaela benson talk about yeah yeah exactly yeah um, so that was the two projects then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then we we thought I think we've been we touched upon that, but we were also when we discussed this beforehand, like the wider lessons that we learned from this. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about some of those, haven't we? Um, yeah. The the questions of um aesthetics um how how we bring together those different kinds of disciplines and mm. whether we're as researchers trying to find out things or, or tell something already preconceived which mm. might be what we imagine dramatists would want to do mm. or vice versa um what else what do you else do you think we've learned from this work no i think um i think generally it could be uh, it could uh, about the like the importance of uh, um, like maybe presenting your your work in different 
shapes. Maybe it could be theater. It could be like writing in different uh, in different formats for different audiences. Um, it's uh, it's not always what is premiered. And as a non English speaking uh, academic, it's always a challenge that to uh, also to publish in in our uh, our own language for our local audiences because it's the english articles that we get points for but they are much harder for uh, for the communities that we research and and want to uh, to talk to uh, to to read or to uh, to find uh, so in um, at least in in a swedish context that's uh, it's something that I thought a lot about in in uh, in relation to um, collaborating with with artists and uh, not just uh, dramatists. It could be um, other um, other artists that kind of tell about society in different ways. That that's one way to do that uh, because um, yeah, uh, the English artic- the English articles uh, might not be enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess thinking about the differences between the two disciplines, if you like, or mm-hmm. ways of working, um, also reveals some of the similarities. So, the creation of characters you were talking about, we also yeah. create characters in some sense from the mm-hmm. data we have. Yeah, um, yeah. But also, you make you it makes also makes you appreciate the academic practice. I think that that. The, you could see that, all right, that made a good play. But as a sociologist, I can there's something, some things that I can contribute with in this discussion, like our work that takes much, much longer to produce, and and we have to care about. It's very strict how we present it and how we use our data and so on. And also that too, maybe because of course art, it's it's. You can call it an analysis, but it's not. Uh, it's all not. You don't write your conclusions that way in art, and that that's um, that's uh, that's useful. But it's, it might also be useful with uh, academic writing that is very uh, like specific. That going from this, I can I conclude this and this and this, and it's easy to know what uh, what the um, the author wanted to say. So I think that's that's this it's the there's the there's um that's value in different kinds of work. We need to um to tell about society <laughs> in in different ways. Uh, yeah. but often with I mean it's not artists in get in general, but at least artists who wants to uh, address social issues, the same issues that, that we address. Of course there's great similarities and we need to take uh, we collaborate, but also take uh, like to to listen and take take um, to um, um, to read and listen to each other's work. There's there's a lot of inspiration there. I think. Yeah, I think one last thing I'd want to suggest as well is thinking about ethics in similar and different ways in the different kinds of work. And the what things I would think of would be the kind of realism of either drama or social research and as sociologists our expectation being to anonymize um participants um whether that how that works when people can recognize themselves or not and what that means in a in a more fictionalized or more docudrama piece of work and how people might see themselves and on the other hand but related questions of power so um when we think about when we fill in our ethics forms and we think about whether this might do any harm to people and think about, you know, whether that's material or emotional, if we're talking about sensitive subjects. Um, I think that also relates to the theatre and art production world, but maybe in particular ways, depending on the theatrical methods that are used, because in some ways more participative methods can call on all sorts of resources from people um, which might have unexpected effects. I'm thinking of particular experiences I've had with playback theatre where someone tells their story and the actors produce it back to them, which can 
go mm. wrong <laughs> and can yeah, be upset. Yeah. I also think that that I I can really see that the the methods training you have as a sociologist uh, that's it's very it's it's very useful and, and you can see that artists may have to deal with the same ethical issue but maybe they don't have that training that that we have so I think uh, there's really a <laughs> I, I think there's a, that's a, a value in collaborating with sociologists in this project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to to start to wind up. <laughs> yeah, we would only suggest some tasks for people who've managed to watch to the end. Um, if you want to introduce? Yeah, we we're talking about this. It's it's a bit difficult method to kind of have, to to just um, have like student tasks. <laughs> um, yeah, given all I was saying about the resources and time and ethics mm-hmm. involved. Um, but our suggestion um, would be to you, um, use a transcript from some research, so maybe two pages of a transcript from an interview you've done or using examples that we'll share with this video. Yeah. Um, to look at it first as a researcher, so to think, to read through it, think about what's interesting, where you might follow up. And then secondly, to, um, with another student, ideally, to read that through as a script so to try to you might not be an actor and it's not necessary we don't um, need an audience <laughs> no you don't need an audience and you don't need really any drama skills um no one's judging the performance but it's for you to think about empathizing and inhabiting the the person that you're whose words you're reading and what, what that means both as the researcher side and the interviewee um and then to think about what whether that's different how that's different or how it's similar to your or informs your researcher thinking and I think also it could be a good idea to, to just even if you're not if you don't sit, think that you're going to work with theater method just read some some of the texts that we uh, that we put on the reading list um, and just see what if that uh, makes you think of of sociology like if I think I learned a lot uh, and, and it it, uh, it gave me a lot to think about just to read about uh, theater methods and and the projects that other people made um, to just make it, to to look at your own practice from a different from a new perspective and see uh, for one thing I think we, we touched upon that but as as a student or uh, before I was in this uh, uh, theater project, I didn't think of, of of myself as creating characters <laughs> or like portraying people. Uh, but I, but in the in this uh, project I, afterwards, that's I think I don't do it in the same way as a dramatist. But of course, I do that in in some sense, and it's I think that I like to to be aware of that <laughs> um and um i always think about that when i i write uh, using uh, interviews uh, nowadays so that's that's something that i came to think about uh, by working with and reading about the other methods so even when we're not using these creative methods in our own research they can help to refocus us on how we work as researchers yeah, and also I think it's an example also that with uh, that it could be even if you don't pick the theater methods to try out a few methods to see because it produces different kind of data. <laughs> Some, yeah, and and that could be worth worth trying. Uh, and also, as you said, just I'm looking forward to the article that you and uh, and Jasmine is is writing on on that project. Just what. Because you already wrote the book before with this, uh, and then to see like what happens when you uh, elaborated on the data this way, um, and what can, can you as sociologists make make out of that? So to keep analyzing how the data travels through all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. That has been great to chat. Yeah. Say goodbye to you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.